All right. Nice. Very nice. Maybe maybe I should make that a requirement in the future. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about three-dimensional coordinates to start. So what we're going to do for three-dimensional coordinates for now um, is we're going to talk about rectangular coordinates. So to our familiar x and y axis, so here's our x-axis and here's our y-axis. And we're, we're kind of tilting it a little bit because we're, now we're visualizing this coming out of the screen. It's not flat. We're going to add a z-axis. So this is going to be our three-dimensional coordinate system. And all of these axes are perpendicular to each other. So we're, we're kind of visualizing the, the plane, the xy plane, that's kind of tilted like this. And the z-axis is going up from there. Um, so this is our three-dimensional coordinate system. And our points in three dimensions Instead of ordered pairs, we have ordered triples. We need three numbers to, to represent a point, x, y, and z. And just like in the plane when we talked about polar coordinates, the different coordinate system, in three dimensions, we have several other different coordinate systems. So two of them are cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates, which you will come to know and love when you take out three. Um, and instead of coordinate axes, we have coordinate planes. Our coordinate planes are the xy plane. That's our familiar two-dimensional plane. So the xy plane is this one. And on the xy plane, since we're not above it, we're down on the plane, z equals 0. We have the xz plane. So that would be this plane that's of the board this way. And on the xz plane, we haven't gone any direction, any amount this way or this way, so y equals 0. Thank you. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. And we also have the yz plane. So the yz plane is the one that's yz plane. And because on the yz plane, we haven't gone forward or behind the screen, so x equals 0. We call this a right-handed system. Because, have a good weekend. Because if we stand at the origin with, our, with the z axis going through our head, our right hand points in the direction of the x axis, and our left hand points in the direction of the y axis. So our right hand points in the direction of the x axis, so we call it a right handed system. A left handed system is if we stood that way and the x axis was pointed in the direction of our left hand. We generally always use right handed coordinate systems. Instead of quadrants, 
instead of four quadrants, we have eight octants. So our eight octants, octant one is where x, y, and z are all positive. So we can think of that as being above the first quadrant. So up here. And then two through four go counterclockwise around the z-axis. So octant two, so octant one is here above the positive xy plane. Octant two would be behind the screen. Octant three would be behind the screen, but over here. Octant four would be in front of the screen, but to the left of the x-axis there. So octant one, two, three, and four are kind of kind of like being above quadrant one, two, three, and four. The fifth octant is below the first. So instead of being up here above the xy plane, we're going below the xy plane, so where z is negative. That would be the fifth octant. And then six or eight, we go counterclockwise again. Yes? Is there maybe a photo you can show us or something to help us visualize? The photo the photo is going to look like this. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we could, <laughs> we could, I could add my negative axis here. Maybe you want to put sh like shadows on it. <laughs> it's like, like a clear box. Like, I'm, I, don't, I just don't think I'm getting what this is. Like that it's two lines. That's, that's what a three dimensional graph Come is going to look like. All right. Let me, let me do this. <laughs> it's, it's always interesting because we live in three dimensions, but we have such a hard time visualizing. <laughs> it is difficult because we're trying to draw three dimensions on a flat surface. All right, so here is my xy plane. On the board, it's like this. So there's the xy plane. Here's the z-axis coming straight out of here. Um, so the z-axis coming out. First octant, second octant, third octant, fourth octant. Here, 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 here. The fifth octant would be back, behind, five, six, seven, eight. Is there a Z coming out through the back? Yes, that would be the negative Z-axis. Positive Z-axis, negative Z-axis. So first octant, here above the first quadrant, second octant, here above the second quadrant, three, four, and then we go back below, below the first octant, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, okay. seven, eight. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. what I was looking for. If, if you like go online, like But that's exactly like this. <laughs> that was it's more like on the, the one section. I don't know. It's hard to explain. So somewhere in front of me. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one through four is always positive. Because they're on the positive Z axis. And one through four, Z is positive. All right, so fifth is below the first, and then the sixth, th sixth through eighth, we go counterclockwise around the z-axis again. Really, the, the main thing that we will we'll work mostly in octant one, and then less often than that, octants one through four, so above the, the main quadrants in the xy plane. All right, so let's let's practice plotting some points in three dimensions. 
So all of these we're going to plot. So number one, we'll plot three, two, three. So I'm going to draw my axes here. And I'm going to use dotted lines for my negative axes. So there's the negative z, negative x, negative y. y, x, and z. 3, 2, 3 tells us we go three units in the, in the positive x direction. So we're going 1, 2, 3. So we're going over here to x equals 3. And then we're going two units in the y direction. So I'm going to go over here. <coughs> There's y equals 2. So we go three units in the x direction, two units in the y direction, and then we go up three units. So we're going to go up this way. And if we go straight over to the z-axis, that would be 3. So the point is above this point in the x-y plane at 3, 2. We go straight up. All right, let's look at another one. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 3. Yes? Why do we have to go to the side? Like, once it went up 3, why did we have to check it? Like, to the left? I was, just, uh, I was just drawing if we went, showing that if we went straight over to the z-axis, that height would be 3 units. Just like we went three units this way, here we go three units above the x y plane. So we're going, we're going three units this way, two units this way, and then three units straight up. So are those? I'm just confused about the curve lines. Are those? Or are the like not vertical or horizontal? This one. So do you go up from the bottom? This is actually 3 at z. It's slanted because this plane is slanted. So this line is parallel to this plane. All right, let's look at 2, negative 1, 3. Oops, I need a solid line. Do that, do that. So the dotted the dotted lines are my negative axes. That's x, that's y, and that's z. Uh, negative two, negative one, three. So we're going negative two in the x direction. So we go back this way. There's negative two. We're going negative, let me move that. We're going negative three, or sorry, negative one units in the y direction. So I'm going back this way. So that's negative one. And these dotted lines are supposed to be parallel to the axes. So y equals negative one. And then we're going negative three units in the z direction. So we're, we're going down below the xy plane this way. So we go three units down that way. And if we went over to the z-axis, that would be at negative three. So what we did here is we went negative two units in the x direction. We went neg negative one unit in the y direction. 
and then we went down below the sheet three units. So that direction. <laughs> All right, let's look at one more. Um, negative four, four, one. So there are my axes. My negative axes. So we're going negative 4 in the x direction. So I'm going back here, 4 units. Yes? Couldn't you technically draw the um, z and y uh, lines completely drawn in instead of having the dotted lines? Is there a space in that? Um, I just use the dotted ones to, to show that those are the negative ones. Okay. But you can draw them in solid. Um, so we're going negative four units in the x direction. So go, we're going back behind the screen, four units. We're going four units in the positive y direction. So we're going over this direction, four units. So that's y equals four. And then we're going one unit up. So that would be the point negative four, four, one. And if I brought this segment directly over to the z axis, it would be at z equals one. So we're saying this distance up is one. <clears throat> All right, we, we will not have to plot a lot of points in three dimensions. The main idea is to be able to visualize three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface a little bit. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. All right, questions? All right, let's talk about some familiar formulas from two dimensions that, go, that apply directly to three dimensions. Um, distance formula. We'll also talk about the midpoint formula. We're going to talk about distance and midpoint. So we're between two points. So between x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2. So we're talking about we're interested in the distance between these two points. Distance formula in three dimensions looks exactly like the distance formula in two dimensions. We just add a part for the z. Distance, the square root, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That's our distance formula in two dimensions. And then we're just going to add z2 minus z1 squared. And this comes from applying the Pythagorean theorem twice. One, one part for the x and the y, another part for the z, and then you can put them all together. It's exactly the same as in two dimensions. We're just adding that z part. The midpoint between those two points, exactly like in two dimensions, we average the x's, the y's, and the z's. So we get x1 plus x2 divided by 2 y1 plus y2 divided by 2, and z1 plus z2 divided by 2. 
just like in two dimensions, we're just adding that part to the scene. So I'm not going to go through a bunch of examples calculating with these. It's very, you're just plugging in numbers and calculating. All right, let's look at one familiar, um, well, uh, uh, an equation, a surface, our first three-dimensional surface. A sphere, equation of a sphere. Well, a sphere is essentially like a, essentially a three-dimensional circle. So our center is going to be at H, K, J. And our radius is going to be R. Well, the H and the K, just like our H and K from, uh, from two dimensions. Our equation of our sphere, X minus H squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus j squared equals r squared. So circle in two dimensions, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. We just have the z part that we're adding. And we have the equation of a sphere. When you go further in math, we'll talk about other equations that have to do with conic sections, but in three dimensions. We have paraboloids and ellipsoids and hyperboloids and hyperbolic paraboloids, all kinds of interesting surfaces that come from our conic sections. All right, so let's look at an example that I think we'll all enjoy from this equation of a sphere. We want to find the center and radius of the sphere given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2x plus 6y minus 4z minus 2 equals 0. Anyone want to make a guess what we do here? Complete the square three times. So let's do this. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to uh, gather the terms together and complete the square at the same time. So on, on the right-hand side of the equation, I'm going to add this 2. So I'm going to say equals 2, and then we'll put our other things over there. So we get x squared minus 2x. Divide 2 by 2. We get negative 1. Square that, we get 1. So that's our x term. So we're going to add 1 there. We get a plus y squared. Um, plus 6y, divide the 6 by 2, we get 3, add 9, and we add a 9 there, plus z squared minus 4z, divide that by 2, we get 2, square it, add 4, we need to add 4 there. Now, let's think back to what we did in chapter 9, we may not want to, but is this a good, good idea? In looking at this equation, how can you tell that it's a sphere? all the numbers in front of the squared parts are, are equal. If the numbers in front of the squared parts were different, you would end up with what you call an ellipsoid. So like a, a, a rugby ball shape, kind of a squash sphere. All right, so what we get uh, when we do this, x minus 1 squared plus y plus 3 
squared plus z minus 2 squared equals 16. So our center is 1, negative 3, 2, and the radius is 4. Nice. All right, so one, one tool that help, can help you visualize surfaces in space is visualizing how, where they intersect or how they intersect with a coordinate plane. And we call that the trace of a surface. So the trace of a surface is how it intersects with a coordinate plane. So let's look at an example. We want to describe the trace of x minus 4 squared plus y plus 3 squared plus z minus 1 squared equals 25 in the xz plane. So we want to, what we're trying to do is figure, figure out what, what kind of shape this sphere makes in the plane when it intersects with the xz plane. <coughs> well, what, what kind of possibilities do we have? So we have a plane cutting through a sphere. What are we going to get? A circle. That's a possibility. We get some kind of circle. If we think of, if we think of a plane, or sorry, a sphere passing through the board, it's going to make a circle that gets bigger and then smaller. What's another possibility? A point, right? The, t the sphere could be tangent to the plane. So we get a point. We get a circle, a point. What's another possibility? What if the sphere is out here and we want the trace in this plane? We get no trace. It's possible that it doesn't intersect that plane at all and we get no trace. So we have some different possibilities for this sphere. Well, let's figure out what it is. What's true on the xz plane? Y equals zero. We want to substitute. And then simplify. So we substitute y equals 0. Whoops, didn't mean to make that mark. Um, and we get x minus 4 squared plus 0 plus 3 squared, 9, plus z minus 1 squared equals 25. And then we can subtract x minus 4 squared plus z minus 1 squared equals 16. So the trace of that sphere in the xz plane is a circle with center 4, negative 1, x, and z. In the xz plane, you only have an x and a z. And the radius is 4. And the traces, the trace, traces help you visualize other kinds of surfaces as well. In Cal 3, we talk about, talk about different surfaces and how they intersect the planes, and that helps us sketch what they're going to look like in three dimensions. Yes? So do we actually write like the trace of the like equation is or with the this would be equation is fine? That equation is fine. Okay. All right, questions? All right, let's talk about three-dimensional vectors now. Yes.
A little bit, yeah. There'll be some time. This one, this section is mostly mostly definitions. And it's mostly definitions that we've talked about before. We're just adding, adding something to them. All right, so vectors. Remember that a vector has direction and magnitude. So we're not just interested in the rockets going 155 feet per second. The rockets going 155 feet per second that way. So we want to know the magnitude and the direction. In space, our vector is in component form. Just like in two dimensions, our vector is going to be given by, we use ang uh, angle bracket, um, V1, V2, V3. X component, Y component, Z component. So we're going three units in the X direction, five units in the Y direction, and ten units in the Z direction. Um, we can also write them in terms of standard unit vector form. So our standard unit vector form, if we remember from two dimensions we had the i hat and the j hat, we just add v equals v1 i hat plus V2 J hat plus V3 K hat. So we just have a unit vector in the Z direction that we call K hat. So I hat in three dimensions would be the vector 1, 0, 0, point along the X axis. <laughs> J hat would be the vector 0, 1, 0, point along the Y axis and K hat is the vector 0, 0, 1, point along the z-axis. And just because it's the right time, we have this. Okay. So we have our standard unit vector i hat, j hat, k hat. These are two different ways of writing the same vector. Um, the zero vector. Zero vector is just a vector with components zero, zero, zero. And note that our vectors, we put a little arrow over to show that we're talking about vectors. And the zero vector does not equal the number zero. Zero vector is a vector with no length. The zero number is a number zero. All right, we're good so far. All of this hopefully is ringing a bell from when we talked about these uh, two-dimensional vectors in chapter six. And if I remember right, we all very much enjoyed vectors then. Um, the vector between two points P1, P2, P3, those are the x, y, and z coordinates of one point, and Q, which is going to have coordinates Q1, Q2, Q3, is, I'm going to write my vector, is Q1 minus 
P1, I need my angle brackets for my vector. Q1 minus P1, comma. Q2 minus P2, comma. Q3 minus P3. And the way we remembered it, the shorthand way we remembered it when we talked about this before, was terminal minus initial. We take the terminal point, subtract the initial point, and we get our vector between the two points. All right, vectors are equal. Only if each pair of components is equal. So we need the x components to be equal, the y components to be equal, and the z components to be equal for two vectors to be equal. Everything has to match. The magnitude. The magnitude is how we talk about the length of the vector. The magnitude of a vector so we have V in component form, V1, V2, V3. We write with two bars, magnitude of V. And it's the square root of V1 squared plus V2 squared plus V3 squared. And this is just really the magnitude of a vector is the, using the Pythagorean theorem. That tells us how long the vector is. We're thinking like the, the length of the hypotenuse if we're thinking of the triangle. Unit vector. Unit vector has magnitude 1. Unit vector in the direction of V is we divide the vector by its magnitude. V over the magnitude of V. So we divide by the magnitude. We're kind of getting rid of the magnitude of the vector. We're turning it into a vector with magnitude 1. And that's the same as writing 1 over V, magnitude of V times V. So that will give us a unit vector in the direction of a particular vector, just like in two dimensions. Exact same thing. Are we good so far? We just have a few more. Um, addition or subtraction. To add vectors or subtract vectors, we add or subtract vo uh, components. So V is in component form V1 v2, v3, and u is u1, u2, u3, v plus or minus u is v1 plus or minus u1, v2 plus or minus u2, v3 plus or minus u3. We just add or subtract the components. Scalar multiplication. And remember,
remember, a scalar is just a real number. When we talk about vectors, we call real numbers a scalar. K times V, we just multiply each component by V. And what this does is makes it either longer or shorter. So I'm going to say K equals a scalar. Dot product. One way that we multiply vectors is by using the dot product. So u is in component form u1, u2, u3. And v is v1, v2, v3. The dot product, u dot v, we call it the dot product because we're showing the multiplication with a dot. u dot v is u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3. We multiply the x components, multiply the y components, multiply the z components, and add them together. In two dimensions, we just have this, the first two. Three dimensions, we just add, we have the z part. That's what we're doing for all of these. It's important to remember that the dot product is a scalar. It's just a number. It's not another vector. One reason that we're talking about three-dimensional vectors, an important reason, is we want to talk about another way that we're going to multiply vectors called the cross product. That's what we'll talk about on Monday. All right, I want to look at um, one quick example, and then we have a couple more definitions and we'll be done. So we want to find the component form of the vector from ne 2, negative 4, 1 to 5, 7, 0 and a unit vector in the same direction. Well, to find uh, the component form, we're going to do two terminal minus initial. So our vector, v, the terminal means where we end up. So we're doing terminal minus initial. 5 minus 2 is 3. 7 minus negative 4 is 11. And 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that's our vector from 2, negative 4, 1 to 5, 7, 0. To find our unit vector, the magnitude of V is the square root of 3 squared plus 11 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is the square root of 131. So our unit vector is 1 over square root of 131. We're dividing by that magnitude times this vector.
If we wanted to, we could distribute. That's the same as writing 3 over the square root of 131, 11 over the square root of 131, and negative 1 over the square root of 131. And if you calculated the magnitude of this vector, you'd find you'd see that it was 1. Just like we did in two dimensions, we just have this extra z component. All right, we're good there. Angle between vectors. Angle between vectors. Um, and our angle is 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi. So between 0 and 180 degrees. We can find it using the dot product, cosine theta, u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. It's the exact same formula we talked about with in two dimensions. It works exactly the same in three dimensions. If u dot v equals 0, do we remember what that tells us? Well, u dot v is 0. So cosine theta is 0. What angle has a cosine of 0? Pi over 2. If theta equals zero, if u dot v equals 0, theta equals pi over 2, or 90 degrees, we say the vectors, we don't, we, for vectors we don't say they're perpendicular, we say they are or, orthogonal. So the dot product is a test to, to tell if the two vectors make a 90 degree angle with each other. And that turns out to be important in, uh, in math and in physics, in science. And when they make a 90 degree angle with each other, we say they're a product. All right, let's look at an example. Let's apply this formula. Um, we want to find the angle between u, vector u is negative 2, 3, 0, and v is 1, negative 5, 1. Well, we need u dot v. We just multiply the components and add them. So u dot v equals negative 2 times 1 plus 3 times negative 5 plus 0 times 1. So we get negative 17. That would be my dot product. Magnitude of u. We need that for my formula. Square root of 4 plus 9 is the square root of 13. Magnitude of v is the square root of 1 plus 25 plus 1. So it's square root of 27. So from our formula here, theta is the inverse cosine of negative 17 over the square root of 13 times the square root of 27. Plug that in my calculator. This is negative, so what do we know about that angle? The cosine is negative. The 
x coordinate is negative, the angle has to be obtuse. Plug that in my calculator. All these things that we've talked about before. 155.1 degrees. Questions? All right, last thing. Parallel vectors. Vectors are parallel only if they are scalar multiples of each other. So we're saying u is some scalar times b. We talked about this again with two-dimensional vectors as a way to decide if the vectors are parallel. They have to be scalar multiple. You have to mu be able to multiply one by some number and get the other one in order for them to be parallel. And parallel means they point in the same direction. They could be right on top of each other. We still call that parallel. All right, we're good. It's a lot of information. But we, we've talked about it all before th in this vector part. OK. So the three-dimensional coordinate part. And the three-dimensional vector part. All right, there we go.